This is episode number 155 of the Guns Magazine podcast. Hi there, and welcome to the Guns Magazine podcast, one of the shooting world's biggest gun talk programs. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting folks who make up the world of shooting, hunting, law enforcement, and the firearms industry. But first, here's a quick word about our sponsors. The presenting sponsor of the Guns Magazine podcast is the R7 Mako by Kimber. The R7 Mako is a high-capacity polymer frame striker-fired micro-compact from Kimber. Here's just a taste of what you get. 12 and 14 round total capacity with the flush and extended magazines, while the performance carry trigger has the smooth pull and clean break you'd expect from a high-end single-action handgun. The R7 also comes optics ready, or you can have it with optics already installed. Kimber's R7 Mako will feed your appetite for something different. See how at r7mako.com. The supporting sponsor of the Guns Magazine podcast is Craft Holsters. Craft Holsters specializes in production of custom leather holsters for semi-autos and revolvers. Their main mission is to provide every responsible gun owner with a truly custom holster experience at a very reasonable price. Check them out at craftholsters.com. We probably all got one, or at least we owned one at some point, but today we're going to talk about the reasons why you need to own a 22 pistol. My guests today are the husband and wife team of Roy and Susie Huntington. Now, let's talk about why you need a 22 pistol. Well, good morning, Roy and Susie Huntington. Hello, guys. Yay. Good morning. <laughs> okay. How am I so honored that I get the husband-wife tag team of the Huntingtons? That's pretty cool. Well, because I asked Susie to be on because otherwise you and I fart and belch and, <laughs> you know, and I think, oh. I don't know, Susie. I didn't have anything else going on, so oh, okay. I figured, why not? <laughs> well, we appreciate you gracing us with your presence. We just, uh, actually, one of our, our more popular podcast episodes recently was the Uvalde debrief, and uh, boy, that really inspired some uh, unpleasant mail, but it, it was pretty mail. apparent nobody read the report or actually looked into the facts. Who so. is she? What does she know? Yeah. She's mm-hmm. just a stupid girl. Just a girl. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, that girl, in case folks don't know, she's retired. Both uh, Roy and Susie retired from San Diego Police. And Susie was the former editor of American Cop Magazine. And, of course, Roy is our current special assignments editor, which that sounds like an international man of mystery, I think. You know what I just remembered the other day, Susie was, we were doing some insurance things and she said, what's your Missouri driver's license number? And I said, I can't remember. So I went and got it out and I completely forgot. Do you want to know what the last three numbers are? Are they really? Double O seven. Wow. <laughs> but I'm double O six. Oh, okay. so. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we were one off. Wow, <laughs> could have well, gone crazy. Well, this should be an interesting episode. We we've not done any prep or talk, uh, but we just kind of came up with the idea, and it, this literally is going to be just kind of a coffee club chat over the idea of everybody needs a twenty two pistol, and everybody does need. A 22 pistol and we were talking about some of our favorites so we'll continue talking here but now you like them Susie, because you're just a girl right and they just go pew 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 yes they go pew pew <laughs> and i can't they don't make 24 so i'll take the 22 wow. <laughs> set them up knock them down <laughs> <laughs> well you know we should include rifles too though because True. yeah so 22 rifles or 22 pistols or revolvers well before we get into the great wonderful benefits of owning these 22s let's let's get the one thing that just makes me crazy and i still see i just saw it yesterday online is 22 is it the ultimate man stopper really (laughs) seriously if (laughs) if you're carrying a 22 for self-defense um there are better options let's just leave it there okay wait wait a minute If you have a man bun and a lumberjack beard, oh. 
it would be a man stopper. <laughs> wow. Oh, no. Wow. That's, that's why we invite Susie to cut us all to the jugular. <laughs> 50 cal right across the bow. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, and I almost mentioned a name there, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But <laughs> no, I mean, well, all, all three of us have seen people that have, have uh, reached room temperature because of the 22 long rifle, but it's just not really your optimal choice for self-defense. If it's all you can afford, it's all you've got, or it's the only recoil you can handle, I guess, you know, you can make an argument for that, but let's not talk about it so much in the self-defense realm. Cause uh, yeah, you can shoot people and it'll kill them, but it may, you may need to get your calendar out <laughs> before they, uh, before they assume that said room temperature. Well, you know, just so we can put a clickbait title in something like, you know, if you own a 22, is it the ultimate stopper or something? <laughs> we should. But, yeah, we, we should do that. But I had a guy, uh, it was years ago in handgunner and he, I can't remember his name, but he did an, ex- he's a policeman. He did an extensive survey on, on shootings from mm-hmm. agencies and he reached out. He collected a lot of honest to gosh, real information, you know, not baloney that some people do. and. Um, what he found out, it was really interesting. The stopping power curve is pretty flat. Really? You know, I mean, from even from 25s on up, I mean, the yeah. difference was was percentage points, not, you know, 10, 40 percent. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And basically people who were shot with a 22 died like you know, 68 percent of the time and people shot with a 44 Magnum died like 70% of the time. Wow. I mean, it was, the, I was just stunned by it. And, uh, and he had all the information. He sent me all his original data, you know, and I just went, well, hmm. I don't know what to think now. You know? Well, I, I think we, we do have a new episode there. The 22, the ultimate man stopper. And, you know, we like clickbait here <laughs> as much as anybody. <laughs> so, well, I think, you know, Susie summed it up. It was it cause, or, or no, you said it's like, it goes pew, 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 but I think it go, It actually goes pew, pew, pew. I think it goes a little stronger than maybe we think. Susie shot a, a critter in the backyard yesterday at 100 yards with a 22 Magnum. Uh-huh. And boy, I mean, I heard the thwap, you know, 100 yards away and it was dead right there. Yeah. And I think we we all tend to forget that, you know, that's. It was like a scene out of a action movie where the, the critter, you know, launched 20 feet. Wow. Yeah, it was it was critter stopper. <laughs> it was a yeah, dynamic critter stopper. <laughs> okay, so Brent, what's your favorite 22? We'll start with pistols. Is uh, that good? Yeah. Actually, I was going to ask that question because I was sitting okay. here thinking, I don't know. It, that's hard to say. I've got I've got I suppose I could narrow it down to two. And there are two different kinds. One is the Taurus TX-22. I have waxed poetic about it. I think it's a great striker fired 22. Uh, it's a, you know, kind of a medium sized polymer pistol. And everybody I've taken to the range loves it as a trainer. Because you have to learn the manual of arms with the semi-automatic. Uh, it is a 22, you can, so you can shoot a lot and shoot inexpensively. But otherwise, it handles kind of like a striker nine. So my my beloved wife even kind of turned to me and goes, "Boy, I, I could really carry that." And I said, "Well, it's a 22, but well, no, I I really like everything about this. So it is a great trainer. And again, with the 22 cartridge, it's not got excessive recoil, excessive uh, muzzle blast. So folks that are new shooters and are sensitive to those things doesn't bother them as much. So that's a cool one. And then just I suppose for pure fun is the Ruger Wrangler, both the bird's head version and the uh, the regular version, and my custom one that one Roy Huntington did up for me that we're going to write up here in, in one of the Guns Magazine issues soon. It's rocking. It is truly probably one of the most expensive Wranglers in captivity because Roy put an awful lot of effort into it. It's cool as all get out. But when you consider it's a $200 gun, um, that's uh, that's kind of gold plating your Chevy Chevette. But I love it. I love it a lot. And so does everybody well, else that's shot it. I think it, Susie so. had a gold plated Chevy Chevette one time. No, it was a Vega. It was a Vega. No, that's right. Yeah. No, you didn't. No. Yeah. <laughs> really? You know, I think we can't restrict this. Let's just toss that. What's your favorite 22 <laughs> okay. out the window? Because it is. That's impossible. It's yeah. the one you know? you're shooting. It's the one ah, you're shooting. Profound. You're gonna, yeah. It's why we brought her on the show. I was going to say, the women always bring in, you know, they cut to the quick. 
Yeah, well, it's like when you're working on your car in the garage and you can't get it to run and they walk in and they look in the hood and they go, is that red wire supposed to be connected? <laughs> and, and you go, oh, uh, yeah, uh, I have yeah. it disconnected right now because I'm doing a, a cerebellum <laughs> check with the Framus muffler bearing, you know, and then after they yeah. leave, you screw the red wire on the car starts. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, thought right. I, was the only, I thought I was the only one that had that experience. Oh, no, no. Yeah, it's the truth. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's it is. My very first gun was a single shot Remington 514-22 rifle, mm -hmm. which I still have. And every single time I bring it out to shoot it, I smile from ear to ear, <laughs> you know, and, and I don't have any center fire guns like that, you know. So I don't know what the deal is. Is, is it because we love our first kiss? <laughs> you know, wow. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, huh. it's like that's the first time I pulled the trigger on a rifle was on, in that gun. Yeah. You know, and my dad, I can, he was there whispering in my ear about, you know, hey, make sure you squeeze carefully, watch yeah. your sights and all that. And every time I shoot that gun, I just, you know, have this videotape that plays in my brain again about that time. You're right. I was just thinking about all the 22 rifles. I've, I've written about it before. I've got my great grandfather's. Uh, it's it's kind of a Frankenstein. I think it's got a Stevens barrel and it's, we believe, an old Remington. But, you know, you go back to your early teens and, and getting to go rabbit hunting with, you know, the family or friends and uh, all the adventures you've had and all the critters you've shot at. That's very insightful, Roy. No, you know, what's interesting is that I, I know that you have talked about that rifle before your 22, your grandpa's rifle, mm -hmm. and it's his come up in conversations again. And that, and I talk about my 514 regularly. And so it, they, they leave an impact. I mean, Susie, you, you know, you grew up in kind of a non-gun family, but. I know I have no stories to share because <laughs> we didn't have guns. Um, I, I inherited ultimately a, a, 45 that my grandfather had uh from his service in the navy but i mean that stayed in a shoebox and a shelf on in the closet for forever so mm. i I have, I have no stories i can just tell you that the 22s are fun to shoot because there's no fatigue ammo is bountiful yeah and you know it's it allows you especially for a new shooter to be introduced to shooting sports without the, the scariness of a big boom. Okay. So what's your, cause I kind of, other than your police shooting, I think maybe you went dove hunting one time with the Deweys, but I mean, your, your, your gun learning curve has basically been since you and I have gotten together 30 some odd years ago. Do you have a first memory of like, Plinking with a twenty-two, maybe in the desert, anything like that. <laughs> Put Susie on the spot here. Well, I mean, think, think, Susie, well, think. certainly you and I plinked in the desert and, and did a lot. But <laughs> hey, stop that! Is that what the kids are calling it now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to take that one. We went in the desert. We did wow. a lot. Uh, yeah. Desert planking. <laughs> <laughs> you planked in public? Wow. <laughs> Actually, I, re I remember that that was where we used to go with with Gene from the crime lab and Gene would bring machine guns. Yeah. And so we would <laughs> and the 50 caliber and that the was fifth, his 50 caliber bear. And we would shoot. I have some video of Susie shooting M2 carbines. And what is that? Mac 11, the little yeah. 380 full auto with a suppressor. That's yeah. I forgot about that. But yeah. Tw well, you know, what's the first gun I bring out? I taught somebody to shoot the other day. The very first gun I brought out was a 22, a Ruger standard auto 22 pistol. Mm -hmm. And guess which gun by the end of the day, they liked the best. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I was just sitting here thinking about, uh, I did not choose my Jennings 22, which we talked about recently in an uh, <laughs> episode called POS Guns. And I got to say, we're going to have to do a follow-up to that episode because we got so many comments from our listeners sharing their POS. And and one guy who did the same thing, he was he's retired law enforcement, and he carried a Jennings 22 like I did. And <laughs> most of the time it would fire, and sometimes if the moon and stars lined up correctly it would even chamber a second round but uh not not my uh it, i don't that have a that one anymore single shot <laughs> yeah. A, yeah single shot you know and those do have and i had forgotten about this because i think one of the comments uh 
what was that a guy said something like what yours didn't ever go full auto because <laughs> <You know? laughs> the firing pin used to jam yes. forward and so then it was just like who needs a disconnector when the, you know brrr, how cool you know? is that now that would be a good self-defense weapon i mean i'm not very well, controllable but well you know you know what you bring up a good point and since we're talking about 22s when at the uh, police uh, uh crime lab they had a gun collection so of course i used to spend days and days up there looking at guns of course uh, you did but they had a you know what they had a cult single action that was actually lettered to custer at the time of the seventh no. cavalry at the t- yeah they had it there's no doubt absolutely positively wow. and uh that they, they used to destroy guns but gene always just managed to keep it in the collection somehow you know yeah. but anyway they had this little 22 it looked like a llama 380 automatic or is it a yama i don't know I the llama 380 yeah, yeah. And only it was a 22 and there was made in mexico they were called a trejo T R E J O probably right Susie it's yeah like the actor. Trejo yeah Danny Trejo so, yeah like the oh, actor okay. Danny Trejo and uh, it was a select fire twenty two wow and factory made in Mexico of course yeah. you know and uh, and it had a ten shot magazine and we never did break it or wear it out but it was pretty much shot constantly <laughs> because it's immediately you don't need opiates. If you have a full auto 22 <laughs> pistol, because you just we would put the magazine in rack it. Everyone would look at each other and grin. <laughs> if you were really fast on the trigger finger, you could get two bursts out of it. Yeah, <laughs> it shot wow. so fast. I have no idea. Fifty nine rounds a minute or so. Just <laughs> and it was empty. But evidently, the bad guys in Mexico used to use them for assassination. Oh, geez. So basically, you would walk up to some poor schmuck sitting in his car, stick this through the window, empty a 10 round magazine in his you know, body moly. in about a 10th of a second <laughs> and then stroll away. So, wow. so see, they are, they do go pew, 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 but if they go pew, 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 <laughs> a lot and fast. <laughs> well, then you're just not killed by one twenty two. It's you've got two twenty. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to. You're not wired for 220, sir. Yeah, yeah you're funny. <laughs> well, Roy, you dodged the question. You've got a personal gun that has so many memories, and I get that. But but overall, you you've shot everything in the industry. What's probably your favorite 22 pistol? Oh, now or you're rifle? on the spot. Exactly. Damn, I hate. It's this. my job to ask questions, not you, because you've already stolen like three of my questions. <laughs> Great minds think alike. You know, the, here's the challenge for me is that as my gunsmithing skills have improved through the years, I tend or, toward wanting to uh, have guns that I make, you know, uh-huh. or customize. And so it would be easy before because I would probably say a Ruger target auto, a heavy barrel Ruger target auto with mm-hmm. a custom trigger or something like that, you know, probably with a scope on it because you can shoot a crosshair scope better than you can with a red dot. Yeah. Uh, but if I had to be restricted to factory guns, uh, I have a Smith and Wesson victory model 22. Yeah. Uh, which I don't remember if, did we shoot when you were here visiting? No. I don't remember saying stainless steel gun. Mm-hmm. It had a, it has a Volkwarzen custom. Yes, we did. Shoot it. Barrel. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, this one and a half pound trigger. I was going to say you, you look at the trigger with intent and it, and it goes off. Yeah. And so I smoothed it up a little bit, but with a crosshair optic on that gun, it literally shoots one hole at 25 yards. Yeah. I mean, we'd, I shot uh, the first five shot group out of it and I looked and I just saw one hole on the target. Mm-hmm. And I, so I started looking at the site and trying to see what was loose or, you know, what did I break something or what? And uh, <laughs> then it dawned on me that the hole was slightly elongated and it was all five shots wow. one in the same hole. So that's pretty cool. I have a Ruger super single six, uh, kind of like your gun, but the, you know, the real one, Yeah. Uh, that was my first 22 pistol, which I got with when I was 16. Thank you, mom, for buying that. <laughs> you know, uh, my yard mowing money went to pay for it at the Navy exchange at 32nd street. Those wow. were the good old days. huh? <laughs> when but, a kid could walk in with money and walk out with a handgun. I know. And everyone would smile. Yeah. Like the guys behind the counter would say, okay, well, you be good, be boy. And it was, I'm <laughs> glad you're getting that gun. You know? <laughs> so. It was a better time. So, Susie, what, what would you nominate? See, I, 
I don't have the breadth of knowledge and exposure to all these different guns that you two have. And while Roy shovels things my way and he says, here, try this. <laughs> I try it. I have a blast, but it kind of stops there because I don't really remember all of the different varieties I have shot. Yeah. So that's why I said, what's my favorite 22? The one I'm shooting at the moment. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Wherever the free ammo came that's from. Right. Yeah. You know? If yeah. the ammo fairy comes along with it, I'm good. Well, you know, it is, it is. I never really thought of that before. It is kind of ironic is that, you know, Susie likes guns. She goes hunting. She's, you know, there's, I, if I buy a new gun, she goes, Oh, what do you got? Oh, okay. That's nice. Right. Uh, but she doesn't really have the like sort of, I don't know the uh, dysfunction that you and I have when it comes to guns, the gun craze. <laughs> yeah. The gun craze kind of. I think that's one of those basic gender differences. Again, women are far more pragmatic. <laughs> <laughs> we well, tend to get a little wrapped up in this stuff, but women have their things too, but makeup. we won't go there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shoes. Nordstrom's would be fun for men if they had a tool department and a gun counter. <laughs> yes. That's true. I've always thought that, you know, I wonder what's the 22 of purses. There must be such a thing. Yeah. Like with women look and groan, they go, oh, she's got to be like you and I look at and saying, oh, they have a, you know, yeah. <laughs> there's a, a Jennings, you know. <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't Anything know. that's put together with little patches of leather. <laughs> ah. She's right about that. <laughs> yep. If it's patch or denim. And it mm. looks like a toilet seat. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, we are we are now veering. Took a left turn. I I got to know what what in the heck are you talking about? I, I'm so intrigued. Junky purses. <laughs> okay, yeah. junky purses. We entered the twilight zone there momentarily, yeah. but now thanks to Rod Surley's ministrations, we're back. Okay, Thank you. all right, we'll yeah. go back. Well, I since, think. Wait. Okay. How important is your 22? Is that it be super accurate or is it not that important or does it depend on what you're doing with the gun? With me, rifles that, you know, Townsend Whelan, only accurate rifles are interesting. And that that's very true on my pistols. It's a 22 pistol. You know, I, I've never really been into a handgun hunting, not against it or anything. It's just never been my my cup of tea. So I'm I'm just more interested in having fun with my 22 pistols. But uh, rifles, they need to be accurate. And the more I can tweak them to be accurate, you know, that's the fun game for me. So, Roy, I'll ask you the question. <laughs> well, it's I'm not satisfied with the Well, that's what brought on the whole Wrangler silliness mm -hmm. with me is that I got a Wrangler and it shoots like three right. inches or three and a half inches at 25 yards. And the first time I grouped it like that, I just went, oh, wait, <laughs> wait a minute. You know, <laughs> but, but I mean, 25 yards, three and a half inch group, you could kill a rabbit with it yeah. if you wanted to. So I think 99.9999% of the time, that's perfectly adequate. Plus a lot of people can't control the trigger well enough to really shoot up to whatever the guns are right. anyway. But so that's what prompted that. And so by cutting the muzzle and recutting the forcing cone and doing the action, I was able to get those groups down to about an inch and a quarter or so an inch and a half. And then it was better, but I find it ironic. Isn't it there? I spent days and days and days <laughs> to get a group from three inches to an inch and a half. Yeah. <laughs> with a $200 Which was, pistol. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But boy, I'm with you with rifles. I've got a couple of Anschutz rifles and I have one of those uh, Ruger precision bolt action 22s. Oh, the kind of chassis gun, I'm jealous. you know, and uh, you know what? I unbelievable value on that Ruger. Yeah. Now the Anschutz, they were thousand dollar rifles, you know, and you add a thousand dollar scope and you've got a two thousand dollar 22, but prairie dog hunting yeah <laughs> yeah there's see susie's a real rifle shot i mean yeah. she's been to the long range right precision rifle classes and her favorite rifle is a, a remington 308 a police rifle that's all you know geared up yeah. so she really you know she appreciates an accurate rifle which keeps me on my toes of course but <laughs> I truly missed my calling. I should have been a sniper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, Susie would have been one of those babushka Russian snipers. Oh, you know? no. 
Ludmilla <laughs> Suzunskius, you know, killed 391 Russian or German officers in wow. Finland. <laughs> you know, well, I will say when we were out there last time and I spotted the wild hogs on your property, which those are pretty much kill on sight like they are in most places. And you went and got Susie's sniper rifle to put up by the, the door in case they appeared again. And, and the gleam in her eye, it was this <laughs> this little sparkle that when she thought she was going to get to snipe something um unfortunately they haven't showed back up have they no, no. that's really weird and you weren't intoxicated i know no, it was early no, in the I was morning stone but stone sober yeah. I was yeah. sleepy, but I was stone sober and, it and was the, sleepwalking. Yeah. <laughs> partially. And and the funny thing is I, I looked at him, I looked at him, tried to look at him through my phone. I mean, I they were clearly hogs, but I didn't realize all your optics were sitting down there. You had telescopes and binoculars yeah. and all this stuff. <laughs> and, ah, crazy. But I yeah, swear been, they were pigs. Brain observer that he is. Yeah. He missed all that. Well, I still sleep we, there. But uh, we've been looking every you know, every I put game cameras out. We haven't found mm-hmm. any. Although I did uh, check the map and check with uh, the state of Missouri. And they said that they are in this general area yeah. now. So, hmm. but yeah, we're looking, but yeah, Susie's used that rifle. She's shot a uh, more than one groundhog with her 308, <laughs> 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 which usually we use a 22 Magnum or a 222 Remington. But yeah. I sent a picture of one to uh, a guy I know in the industry. And I said, Hey, you know, uh, 308 groundhog, you know, works really good. You know, and and he and he sent me a note back and he said, Yes, it's always important to use enough gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time she does that, catch a little sly little picture off from the side because I'm sure she comes up off the rifle with just that that tiny little grin. <laughs> I think I have that picture. She was laying, you know, our deck up on top outside yeah. the kitchen. She was laying prone on the deck. <laughs> of course. She had like flowered shorts on and a tank top. Right. <laughs> and she's got her police bolt action 308 poked through the fence and had just <laughs> sent a groundhog to the <laughs> groundhog heaven. You know? And I think I have that picture, Susie. And she's turned back looking at us with a big grin on her wow. face. <laughs> Can we talk about that stuff in public? I not? think we just did. And and somehow we completely got away from 22s. But that's that's big fun, though. It's big in fun. the spirit of fun. Exactly. Which is, I think, what these guns are for. I will say that people tend to buy a Ruger 1022 and then spend the day making empty brass cartridge cases. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, it's, I've never really understood that very much because they, I mean, I understand it's fun. You go bang, 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 bang. Okay. Well do that a few times and now learn to shoot the rifle. Yeah. You know, I mean, learn to sight it in and learn to use optics and learn trigger press and all that. But if you just, you see them at the range, don't you? Like, especially indoor ranges, new mm-hmm. shooters, they'll put up one target at about maybe 10 yards. Mm-hmm. And then shoot 300 rounds at it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, it looks like a tornado went through around their feet. Yeah. You know, with the empty brass. And I don't know what you've accomplished other than every time they pull the trigger, they they go tee hee tee hee. They pull the trigger again. They go tee hee tee hee. (laughs) Well, and then they load a magazine and completely dump the magazine as fast as they can. Got to do that. Yeah. (laughs) And then turn around and go, oh, God, that was so much fun. (laughs) I suppose that's okay. I mean, you know. Okay. Here's here's an idea. And I. I think I recall we wrote about it in COP that when I'm going a little bit in the Wayback Machine, uh, but there was uh, ammo was pretty scarce because mm-hmm. it was it was during a anti-gun time. Uh, Dems were in control of everything. But th- there was talk about police agencies and their SWAT teams using ARs that were in a 22 platform so they could train yeah. with endless ammo and not waste the good stuff, hmm. if I recall. You're so, right. Yeah, you're I right. Mean, there's another plus for 22s. Yeah. There were subcaliber conversions. Well, you know what? That actually is what prompted uh, Smith and Wesson to bring out the MMP 22. Yeah. Because that was right during that phase. And sure enough, see, because they made it really. They made the MP 22s act and function exactly like an AR-15. Yeah. Because there were a lot of people making clones, but the buttons weren't right. right. You know, it just yeah. things weren't exactly the same. So if you develop muscle memory, that would be a bad thing. 
But yeah, the MMP22, I use one here. When someone says, hey, I just bought a AR-15, would you show me? Well, first thing we do is we shoot the MMP22 a lot. And I just remembered I was in a media event a couple of years ago, and uh, Rock River makes or made one. I think they still do. And it was a sweet gun. And, and like you said, it was... Without looking at the caliber marking, you know, you wouldn't realize it was actually a 22 long rifle as opposed to a 223. Well, maybe we just, you know, this is why we brought Susie in because yes. she brought up, I think it's maybe one of the most excellent points of this is that really today, I think shooting 22s is really just subcaliber training. Yeah. I mean, because even if you're plinking with your Ruger Wrangler, you're still working on your sight picture, you're still working on trigger press you know you're still working on gun handling skills and but not at a dollar a shot <laughs> yeah you know? yeah exactly well as i've often said gun and fun are one letter apart and the 22 <laughs> certainly represents that concept so well i think that's a great place we can uh, call this a day for listeners send us a uh reach me out reach out to me at editor at gunsmagazine.com let me know what your favorite 22 is or if you're listening on youtube leave us a comment down there so roy and Susie, thank you so much for this this special edition husband and wife interview so thanks a lot guys adios amigo adios amigo hey and make sure that if you're listening uh post what is your favorite 22 uh, i'd really like to to hear what you guys have to say If you like this episode, you can check out episode number 122 called The Gun is Pure Fun, where we talk about the Ruger Wrangler. Episode number 124 is about buying a used revolver. Or you might check out episode number 126 entitled Safe Queens with Tom McHale. If there's a topic you want to hear, somebody you'd like us to interview, or you want to share your thoughts, please drop me a line at editor at gunsmagazine.com. As always, you can find us on your favorite podcast directory, YouTube, and at GunsMagazine.com. And, of course, while you're online, don't forget to check out our great sister publications, American Handgunner Magazine at AmericanHandgunner.com, AmericanCop.com, and our numerous special editions available for sale on our websites and at Amazon. And don't forget to check out our new presenting sponsor, the R7 Mako by Kimber. Learn more at R7Mako.com. That's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. For the entire staff at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting. Get shooting.